Here's a closer look at screening tests. First up, maternal serum screening. Maternal serum screening involves analyzing pregnancy-related protein patterns in maternal blood. Normal amounts of each protein or hormone are known to be present at various gestational ages within the pregnancy. The lab will reduce the risk for a chromosome abnormality from your age-related risk. If the amounts identified in your pregnancy are close to average, fetuses affected with Down syndrome, trisomy 13, and trisomy 18 often have distinct protein patterns. If the pattern of proteins in your pregnancy suggests a chromosome abnormality, this would result in an increased risk from your age-related risk for the baby to be affected. It is important to note that maternal serum screening tests are time-sensitive. The first trimester screen involves maternal blood work between 9 to 14 weeks to look at the pattern of three proteins and hormones. It also requires an ultrasound between 11 to 14 weeks to measure the nuchal translucency, which is the amount of fluid accumulated behind the neck of the fetus. In the second trimester, a quad screen is performed between 15 to 22 weeks gestation to look at the patterns of four proteins and hormones. In addition to determining the risk for common chromosome abnormalities, measurement of AFP, or alpha fetoprotein, on a quad screen quantifies the risk for open neural tube defects, which include birth defects like spina bifida. Lastly, a sequential screen is when both a first trimester screen and a quad screen are performed by the same laboratory. A sequential screen combines results from both trimesters, maximizing the detection rate of maternal serum screening. Results of maternal serum screening are provided as a numerical risk score and classified as screen positive increased risk or screen negative decreased risk results. If the results are abnormal, additional testing is recommended. When maternal serum screening is abnormal for a common chromosome abnormality, there is an additional risk for a rare chromosome abnormality to be present. Maternal serum screening results are not always abnormal because of a chromosome abnormality. At times, they're abnormal because the pregnancy is at an increased risk for obstetrical complications. Complications may include a baby with poor growth, preterm delivery, miscarriage, or preeclampsia, which is when the mother develops high blood pressure. Your physician may recommend maternal serum screening to obtain information regarding these obstetrical complications. Even if you elect another test for chromosome abnormalities, it is important to understand that when protein and hormone levels within a pregnancy are flagged by the laboratory, they often represent normal variations and are not necessarily indicative of a problem with the baby or with the pregnancy. Most women with abnormal maternal serum screening results go on to have healthy babies. Now let's take a closer look at another screening test. NIPS, or non-invasive prenatal screening, is maternal blood work drawn anytime after nine or 10 weeks of pregnancy, which is used to measure fragments of chromosome material circulating in the maternal blood. The chromosomal material is a combination of both maternal DNA and placental DNA. Placental DNA, in most cases, represents fetal DNA. By analyzing DNA, a lab can help predict whether or not the baby has extra or missing chromosome material. All laboratories are testing for the common chromosome abnormalities, including Down syndrome, trisomy 13, trisomy 18, and, when requested, sex chromosome abnormalities. Some laboratories are offering expanded screen for other trisomies which most often result in pregnancy loss along with a few microdeletion syndromes which have been associated with intellectual disabilities and birth defects. Since NIPS is analyzing DNA and not the pattern of protein and hormone, it has higher detection rates and lower false positives compared to a maternal serum screening. Simply put, an abnormal NIPS result is more concerning of a baby being affected, and normal results are very reassuring. NIPS is still a screening test, and although a positive result significantly increases the risk that a baby is affected, it still does not provide a diagnosis. The likelihood a baby is affected after an abnormal NIPS result is referred to as the positive predictive value, or PPV. The PPV varies dramatically and is influenced by the condition flagged as high risk, the gestational age that the testing was performed, and the maternal age. Given NIPS is analyzing both maternal and placental DNA, some false positives are due to alterations in the maternal DNA. Test failure is possible with a small percentage of cases. If no result is reported, consulting with the genetic counselor is recommended. Possible explanations for a NIPS test failure include early gestational age, maternal obesity, as well as an increased risk for chromosome abnormality. In the event of an abnormal NIPS result or test failure, the recommendation is to follow up with diagnostic testing. A consultation with a genetic counselor is recommended after any abnormal NIPS results 
to discuss the implications and review which diagnostic test is most appropriate. The third and final way to screen for chromosome abnormalities is with ultrasound. Ultrasound is used for a variety of indications within the pregnancy, including dating the pregnancy, determining the number of fetuses present, and identifying the placental location to look for physical birth defects and monitor the baby's growth. In the first trimester, ultrasound regarding the fetal anatomy is limited. At 11 to 14 weeks, a nuclear translucency measurement, or NT, can be performed to measure the amount of fluid at the back of the baby's neck. When the NT measurement is larger than normal, the pregnancy is flagged for an increased risk for chromosome abnormalities, miscarriage, and various birth defects. In the second trimester, all women are offered a level 2 ultrasound, which is a more detailed anatomy scan at 20 weeks gestation to look at the baby's organs. In 2 to 3% of pregnancies, a physical birth defect is present. Some of these are minor and easily correctable through surgery, while others are more serious and life-limiting. At times when the ultrasound is performed, a soft marker, not a structural birth defect, is detected. A soft marker represents a subtle variation on an ultrasound and may not require a follow-up. The majority of isolated soft markers are seen in healthy babies and represent normal variants. However, the presence of a marker does increase the risk of a chromosome abnormality to be present. The extent of this increased risk depends on which marker has been detected and whether or not other ultrasound findings are present. If anything is identified at the time of the ultrasound, a consultation with a genetic counselor may be helpful in reviewing its significance. When a chromosome abnormality is present, many times there is an ultrasound finding, while other times there is not. There are some chromosome abnormalities that don't show up in prenatal findings, and there are some birth defects that cannot be detected prenatally. Therefore, a normal ultrasound can signify that there is a reduced risk for problems. However, that doesn't necessarily mean we can detect all problems completely. Even so, a normal ultrasound within your pregnancy is very reassuring. There are many screening options available when it comes to testing for chromosome abnormalities, but our team is here to help. To learn more which tests are right for you and your pregnancy, consult your doctor or visit northwell.edu genetics.